Bumblebee was released on the 24th of December 2018. It stars Hayley Steinfeld and was directed by Travis Knight, not Michael Bay, who directed the previous five Transformer films. And Bumblebee is, I'm not going to lie, the best Transformers film that they have ever made. Live action, that is. This movie is everything that I wanted the other Transformer films to be. Because I think that they're not just mindless action. I think Michael Bay got that wrong with a number of the sequels that he did. Bumblebee is a fun and entertaining movie. And it should, I hope, breathe new life into, tran into the Transformers franchise. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I would have to say about Bumblebee is the storyline is pretty decent. With a lot of the Transformers sequels, I had a problem with them because... They were so repetitive. It felt like Michael Bay and the writers just repeated the same formulas, similar action scenes, and the same ideas of, is humanity worth it? And the same line Optimus Prime used to say at the end of every movie, there's more to humanity than meets the eye. And with Bumblebee, that entire formula is thrown out the window. They give a completely new take on the Transformers. And I have to say, I really enjoyed the storyline. It's very self-contained. It's It paces very well. And it's just a breath of fresh air. It's just very different to any other Transformer movie because there isn't that repetitiveness with the plot, which is a good thing. That really is a good thing. Another thing which makes Bumblebee better than all the other Transformer films is the acting. Now, I'm not saying that the previous Transformer films had good actors. It's just they weren't really invested in the storylines because there weren't that much of a storyline. <laughs> However, in Bumblebee, the main character portrayed by Hayley Steinfeld is actually really grounded. I like Hayley Steinfeld, she seems to be a good actor and, and she gives a strong performance in this role. And her character, I think her character is called Charlie. It's a well-rounded character and it's likeable. It is a very likeable character and you can get behind it and you can understand where this character is coming from. John Cena also plays a military tough guy. He isn't actually that bad. I thought that, you know, they just got him in there because he was a little famous. However, he's not actually that bad of an actor. I think he gives a good performance with what he's given. So I think everyone in this movie acts really well. They're all very likeable characters and they're relatable characters. And if you have relatable characters, then you are more likely to be invested with them and you can get behind them and their struggles. So I think relatability really helps with the characters in this film. A couple of other things which I actually enjoyed about this film is actually the humour. Unlike Michael Bay's Transformers films, this one actually has good humour in it because it feels more organic. Michael Bay's films, they're always going for that very awkward, offensive humour, which only a couple of people in the room would get. There's none of that here. There is no cringy humour. It's all organic humour. And, it, you know, it's all to do with embarrassment and all to do with the character interactions. And that's a good thing. Also, the action in this movie, I was a lot more invested in it than Transformers The Last Night. Because it's not just mindless violence. There's something you can get behind. You're invested in the characters. So when the action's going on and some of the characters are in peril, you're invested in it. You're on the edge of your seat because it's just enjoyable to watch. It's not just explosions. And this, I think, is what people have been trying to say to Michael Bay. He just used explosions for the sake of using explosions. And I really enjoyed what Travis Knight did to this movie. And I would quite happily watch another Transformers film if Travis Knight directed it. Because I think he has a better understanding of the characters. As for negatives, there weren't actually that many negatives to this film. Or not many that actually bothered me. If I had to label my biggest one, it would have to be the villains are quite weak. I feel like they could have done better with the villains. They feel like just nameless villains, you know, just filler villains, just there to develop the plot and just give Bumblebee someone to fight with. And to be honest, they're not bad. It's just, this movie isn't really about the villains. It's more about the character of Bumblebee. And it's more about just ex exploring all of these characters and what all of them are going through. So, yeah, it's not a bad movie. It really isn't. And that is why I will give Bumblebee a 7 out of 10. Now, that might seem like a low score, but it's not. I think 7 out of 10 is fair enough for this movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. And I will definitely see it again when it is released on DVD. So thanks for watching, guys. I really do hope that you enjoyed my Bumblebee movie review. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. And I will see you in another one. 
But first, for those of you wondering where Beefcake is, here is his return. Beefcake's back. Let's get into it. 